Hey folks, Mark back with another vinyl video. This one's another installment of my favorite 12-inch singles. So I'm doing 25 of them, 25 more of them. And these are records that have been just near and dear to me throughout the years, mostly from the 80s and 90s. And records that I feel like have benefited from the 12-inch format. I feel like they're better than their 7-inch single or uh, LP version counterparts. So let's get started. The first one I'm going to show is Electronic the duo of Johnny Marr of the Smiths and also uh, Bernard Sumner of New Order, sometimes with Neil Tennant from the Pet Shop Boys. This one is called Get the Message. It was their second single featuring Bernard Sumner on vocals. And the reason I'm including this is because of its DNA Groove Mix by DNA. They were doing a lot of remixes at the time, notably Suzanne Vega's Tom's Diner. They had a big hit with that. But they also covered, well, they didn't cover, they remixed Electronics get the message using that familiar beat that Millie Vanilli used to use for their hits, but somehow making it sound fresh and original. And this has remained the version that I've always listened to of that song, the DNA groove mix of Get the Message from Electronic. Here's Erasure, Ola Moore. You probably know this. To me, I feel like the 12 inch version of this is definitive. You know, the first two records were good enough. I thought I liked Heavenly Action and, um, what's the other one? Who Needs Love Like That? But this is the record where I felt like Erasure kind of came out, as it were. <laughs> and really, you know, started to show what they were all about. And um, this 12-inch mix really helped, I think, gain them in popularity, certainly with me. Big hit in the clubs. Still a great, you know, when you hear the album version, you're always wishing it was this version. Ola Moore, the remix by Erasure. There was another 12-inch of that that came out with a black cover, but not quite quite like that one. Fats Comet. This is a collective of people uh, from the late mid to late 1980s from the UK uh, related to Tackhead. People like Adrian Sherwood, Doug Wimbish, Skip McDonald, um, Gary Clayl. All of these people had, had a hand in Fats Comet. They released many records under this name, but the best one, I think, was this one called Rockchester. Pretty amazing stuff. Recorded back in 1986, and it still sounds amazingly fresh today. Big, fat beats, not unlike Chemical Brothers. If you're into that kind of thing from the 90s, that big beat sound, lo-fi all-stars, if you were ever following that kind of stuff, definitely, I'll bet you, they had this record in their collection, or Tackhead Records in general. That's Comet, Rockchester. A couple of sinister dark records here. Uh, this one from 1984 by Flesh for Lulu. It's called Subterraneans, the Metro Mix. This one blows away the album version. It's a good seven minutes long, but it needs all seven minutes to happen. Very dark sounding. I love to pull this out at Halloween. And this is nothing like the later stuff. If you heard I Go Crazy and some of those records, those don't have a patch on this. This is this is their first, uh, actually not their first release for Polydor, probably their second release for Polydor. And um, amazing stuff. Subterraneans, the Metro Mix. Another dark record, Feeny Tribe, one of the ugliest records I own. I mean, just not a pretty record at all. Make It Internal from 1987. This is sort of another version of Detestimony, which was another record they had out around the same time, shortly before this. And this came out in the U.S. on Wax Tracks under the name Make It Internal. Love it. Sounds like your worst nightmare. It's amazing. The Feeny Tribe. Here's uh, one. Felix de Housecat did a lot of great records over, over the course of um, the last 15 years. This is one of them from 2001 from his album Kittens and the Glitz. It was Madame Hollywood featuring Miss Kitten on vocals. I started following her after that album. Really fun CD if you can find it or album, uh, Kittens and the Glitz. If you like electronic dance music, Felix de Housecat's pretty darn awesome. And uh, the reason I choose this is because Tiga, another act I follow a lot, a DJ from Canada, um, big big fan of his. He did a remix of this song. It was called Tiga's Mr. Hollywood Version. If you can find that, he not only remixed it, he re-recorded it and sang on it. So he pretty much overhauled the darn thing, covered it, and I like his version quite a bit. So, um, again, it's Madame Hollywood starring Felix de Housecat. Look for this 12-inch. Uh, you you'll, you'll won't be disappointed. I don't know how many of you have heard Fluke, but Fluke have been putting out a lot of dance records since, uh, gosh, 1990 with a song called Philly. Well, they kept putting out a lot of great records throughout the 1990s. And in 97, they released this one called Absurd. And the reason I like this one so much is because of the version by the Mighty Dubcats. Look for it. It's the Mighty Dubcats Vox. 
find that version. And if you're looking to get into Fluke and their electronic dance music, this is definitely a great place to start. Terrific, terrific record. Um, pretty dark as well, actually. You could probably get away with playing it in a, in a golf club and people might, <laughs> people might keep dancing. Um, in 1988, Fraser Chorus is a band from the UK. They signed to a 1987. They put out a record on 4AD called Sloppy Heart. Quickly got snapped up by Virgin, releasing two albums on that label. And the second single they put out on that label was this called Typical. It came from their debut album called Sue. And I really like the 12-inch version of this because it unfolds slowly. And I think that by the time the song ends, it's just uh, it puts a smile on my face every time. It's just a nice, feel-good song. Um, very light and airy. It's probably the best way to describe Fraser Chorus. Light and airy, but with a, I don't know, kind of ethereal vibe. I guess that's light and airy, huh? <laughs> anyway, the extended mix of Typical, I think is definitely worth your time and money. 1988 on Virgin. Take a sip of water here. Talking tends to dry my, dry my mouth out. Here's one by Heaven 17. You probably know this one, Let Me Go. Great song as it is, but its 12 inch version is really special. I think it's a great overhaul and uh, breathes new life into this song. Um, I didn't actually hear the 12 inch version of this until about two or three years after I knew the original. So when I finally heard it, I really thought this was amazing. Sounds great in a club too. This came out in 1982 and there it is, Heaven 17, Let Me Go. What you want to find is the extended mix. Another record benefiting from the 12-inch format is Obsession by Zymox. This is a record they put out when they left 4AD Records, not unlike Fraser Chorus. And uh, they, I don't know what label they signed to over in the UK, but over here they were on Polygram. And they put out this 12-inch called Obsession, and its extended mix I think is amazing. Again, the album version's quite good. Love the album that it comes from, too, Twist of Shadows. But the 12-inch mix is something very special. It takes its time to unfold, and I think it's all the better for it. Obsession, Zymox, the extended mix. Actually, it's the club mix. There you go, club mix. Here's an interesting one called Stretch. I love this. This is just an amazing rhythmic record from 1981, I believe. Yeah, 1981. I'm pretty sure that's the year that it came out. Um, it's out on the 99 label, a New York um, post-punk funk dance label from the early, early 1980s. And um, putting out things like Bush Tetras and uh, Maximum Joy was a band out of Bristol, England. And they released this record called Stretch. And the disco mix is the one that I really like. Disco mix and rap is how it's labeled on here. This is a band formed from the ashes of the pop group and Glaxo Babies. Two very uh, dubbish, uh, punky funk bands from Bristol, England in the late 1970s. And Maximum Joy put out a string of really great 12 inches in the early 1980s, mostly of the funk variety. And this one's definitely good. If you like a certain ratio, Bush Tetras, um, trying to think of anything else to compare it to. Quando Quango, if you know them, check it out stretch and this the woman singing on it um who is janine rainforth lets out one of the best screams i've ever heard committed to vinyl stretch it's just great look for it yellow a great a great uh, tw band on 12 inch format you, i could have picked any number of 12 inches by them but i went with this one you gotta say yes to another excess and i'm choosing the 12 inch mix of this song because the album version I like quite a bit, but the long version of this, the six minute version, I think is just really, really amazing. Yellow, you gotta say yes to another excess and it's the long version. I don't know actually the name of this 12 inch mix. We'll just say it's the 12 inch version. Now here's one from some guys that aren't traditionally a 12 inch kind of group. They're called The Wonder Stuff, an indie rock band from the late 1980s, early 90s. You're probably familiar with some of their stuff. Um, if you're not, their stuff was a lot, very guitar oriented, very popish. But in 1990, they put out this 12 inch called Circle Square and it had a remix called the Paranoia Mix that included a lot of Stone Roses, Waka Waka sort of guitar, very psychedelic and, um, funky, almost like Shaft, you know, that kind of, you know, that kind of wah wah guitar. They used it to great effect on Circle Square, the Paranoia Mix, the Wonder Stuff. The Wonder Stuff 12 inches are always great because you always got um, little inner sleeves that came with them as well. So look that up if you can find it. Circle Square from the Wonder Stuff. 
the Paranoia Mix. Another one from around the same time, from 1991, Blur, There's No Other Way. Great song, great band, love Blur. But this remix, I think it's great. It's just a remix that, that they did themselves of, um, called just the 12-inch mix, done with Stephen Street. And again, it takes its time getting into it. I think it's just, a, it's, it's, it's got a great, the rhythm's right up there up front, and it's just got a great atmosphere to it. I really like this mix. It is simply the 12-inch remix, There's No Other Way by Blur. Nice and Nice by the Stranglers. Stranglers had a lot of great records. A huge fan of them. But this one in particular from 1988, I believe. That is the year on this. Am I right? I might be wrong. 1986. Yeah. And this 12-inch is Nice and Nice, the Porridge Mix. That's what you're looking for, the Porridge Mix. You know, some records have moments in them that uh, make them worthwhile. And this one has a lot of, of them, but... In particular, the way the band members all say, the, they all sing in unison, ooh. And when they do it, it is pretty darn amazing. You'll know it. Look it up on YouTube, the Porridge Mix. And when they all sing together, the, 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 the sound they get is just amazing. The, the sound of their voices together. It's a simple thing. All they're doing is going, ooh. But when they do it, it's like, wow, how did they do that? Amazing, amazing stuff. Great song, too. Nice and nice, the porridge mix by the Stranglers. Here's one, I Start Counting. Great duo from the mid-1980s out of the UK, signed to Mute. Later, they they went did instrumental music under the name Fortran 5 and recorded under the name Computer as well. Computer with a K. Um, but back in the 80s, they were I Start Counting, and they put out this 12-inch called Catch That Look. And the reason that I'm including this is because it's got a remix of a song on their debut album called My Translucent Hands. The song in question is called You and I. And the remix of this puts the album version to shame. I think it's just another one. It takes a little while to unfold, but it's all worth it when it does. And it's only about six minutes long, but it's just a great catchy piece of electronic pop from 1986. You and I, the remix by I Start Counting. Speaking of great remixes, Depeche Mode, Master and Servant. I'm sure, you know, I any I could have chosen any number of Depeche Mode 12 inches, but this mix in particular by Adrian Sherwood. His name comes up a few times in this video. He did that Rochester Fats Comet record we heard earlier, but he's also behind this one. His um, sound company, the On You, On you Sound, which is the label that he, he runs. This is called the On You Sound Science Fiction Dance Hall Classic of Master and Servant, completely deconstructed, completely remixed, completely overhauled, and completely great. If you can find this, which I'm sure you can, dig it up. This is amazing stuff. The Explorers, here's a little known act. Um, not really, you know, a lot of people's favorite act. This is what Andy McKay and Phil Manzanera did after Roxy M Music broke up. In 1984, they did an album as The Explorers with a singer named James Wraith, I believe was his name, yep. James Wraith, and you know, I thought the album was good English pop, you know, nothing, you know, pretty harmless. It's no Roxy music, but it's not bad. And it had a song on there called Lorelei, which I really, really like a lot. But its 12 inch version is completely overhauled with a nice, thick dance beat. And um, I don't know, I think the 12 inch version is, is, is different enough and um, energetic enough to, uh, to uh, you know, have one over on the album version. The Explorers, and this is the, uh, let's see, it's just the extended mix of Lorelei. Here's an act who did great 12-inch mixes, Soft Cell and uh, Bed Sitter, a great classic track from their non-stop erotic cabaret album. The 12-inch mix of this, it's just the called the Early Morning Dance Side, is terrific. It's got an extra verse in it. It um, it just has an extra, uh, it's, it's about eight minutes long. And it really takes it to a new level. I think the song, I hate using that term, taking it to a new level, but it, it, it really does. It takes the song somewhere else. Um, the B-side, Facility Girls, is also great. If you get the 7-inch version of Facility Girls, it's only about two and a half minutes long. On the 12-inch, it's a good six minutes, seven minutes, and uh, you get extra lyrics, extra verses. I just love it. Soft Cell, Bed Sitter on the Some Bizarre label. Also, Mercury. I think Phonogram. Monogram some A couple more to show. Severed Heads. Great act out of Australia. Tom Ellard. Severed Heads. 
a string of amazing 12 and Truth singles and albums during the late 1980s. I think a totally underappreciated act. And in 1986, I believe that's when this came out. Yep, 1986, he put out a record called 20 Deadly Diseases. And this is the extended mix. Amazing. I remember it being astounded by it even then. Listening back to it, I'm astounded that he did it, you know, in 1986. It's, it's extremely cut up extremely um it, it's very complex the way it's kind of chopped together i think it's just an amazing record and showed off his skills as an editor remixer um i'm almost i'm very surprised he didn't get more work during the during the 1990s based on the stuff he did back here in the 80s look for this one 20 deadly diseases the regular album version is on come visit the big bigot but um pretty sure it's on that album but the 12 inch mix is where it really comes alive Here's another one, Section 25. I know many of you probably know this, but if you don't and you like New Order, waste no time in getting the 12-inch version of Looking from the Hilltop. And I'm actually trying to figure out what the actual name of this is. Um, it's the Mega Mix, and you'll know it because it's about nine minutes long, but this thing is amazing. A record that has uh, stood the test of time, came out in 1984, featured on their album From the Hip. But anybody who knows this song knows that the only version you need to hear of this is the Mega Mix. Amazing stuff. Produced by Bernard Sumner of New Order. And on Factory. Here comes that name again. Adrian Sherwood and a remix he did of Over the Shoulder by Ministry. This is one of the last records they did um, before they, they went in a more metal rock direction. This came from their album Twitch, their second album. And this came out in 1986. Amazing stuff. 12-inch version, Over the Shoulder by Ministry. The only version you need to hear. And these last three, I'm going to cheat a little bit and show you two records each because they're just, you'll, you'll see why. This one, Colorbox, um, the uh, Martin and Stephen Young brothers with a woman named Loretta Graham. They formed uh, the, a trio called Colorbox and in 1983 released a 12-inch called Breakdown with a tarantula on the back. And they'd actually put the record out, I'm looking here for the date. They actually put the record out a year before in 1982 as record one. And it's also good. So I'm showing both of these because I like both versions. They're completely different re-recordings or completely different recordings of the song uh, Breakdown and the, it's B-side Tarantula. Not only are they different recordings, they're different arrangements. So amazing stuff. Came out actually here in the US. Uh, the second version came out in the US uh, on the A&M label briefly. Um, the Young Brothers later went on to do an amazing self-titled album called Colorbox. You want to look for that. As well as all the 12 inches. Um, were, they were all recently collected in a box set that came out on the 4AD label. And um, the last I heard of them was they, uh, they got together with the guys out of AR Kane and did the Mars 12 inch pump up the volume, which of course was massive and massively huge. And after that, poof, they went away. I haven't heard anything from them. Martin and Stephen Young, if you know anything that they've done after pump up the volume, let me know, leave me a comment, but look for these breakdown color box. Duran Duran. This was the first thing I ever bought by them, the carnival EP. And so it was the first version I ever heard of girls on film. And here's the original UK 12 inch of it. Girls on film. The night version is significantly different. Than the album version. If you're a Duran Duran fan, you already know that. If you're not, check out the night version. If you like Girls on Film, the night version's got a completely different sound. And um, I don't know, I think it really, um, it, it trumps the album version in mood, I think. Last but not least, Echo and the Bunnymen, Never Stop, the disco tech version. The 12-inch version of Never Stop is just, it's, it's about five minutes long and it is just, um, I think one of their finest moments ever committed to vinyl. I really like this record. Um, it was also issued stateside uh, as, an, as an EP. So you could get the 12-inch version from the UK, or you could get it in the US. Once you hear the 7-inch version of Never Stop, you'll think to yourself, hmm, missing something. <laughs> it's missing the slow buildup that, that the 12-inch version has. So there you go, 25 great 12-inch singles that I think um, are worth you know, they, they, they trump the album versions or the original versions. If you've got any comments, please leave them. Um, love looking at your videos. I'll probably do a third volume of these soon. So um, keep it spinning. Thanks for watching.